and welcome to a Star Sports special. We are going to preview the last test of the summer, um, the last test of a thrilling series between England and India um, via video. And I have a guest for you. We have a guest for you, um, somebody who loves their test cricket just as much as I do, and hopefully will be able to provide some insight into all matters Old Trafford this week. Thanks very much for joining us, Oscar. Oh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Um... I'm a cricket badger, to put it simply. Um, all things stats, all things runs, all things wickets, and in particular, test cricket. And I think all I can say is it's just brilliant to have fans back, obviously. Um, I, I went the other day to the test on day four, and it was just stunning to be back. And I think last summer we had the Pakistan series, which was, I think, equally as good as this one. But it was behind closed doors. And I think having the Barmy Army back in and, you know, seeing the fans get behind our team and seeing top class players back in the flesh is just so refreshing to see. And I think, you know, long may it continue. So fingers crossed. Absolutely. Um, it's been brilliant to have the crowds back. And I think both England and India have benefited hugely from brilliant support through the series. Now, the last test um, starts on Friday and it's currently a very tightly matched betting market. England are seven to four with star. The draw is two to one. India are seven to four. What would your thoughts be with regards to the match winner market? Um, I would say so far, I think if you're if you're taking it on face value, India at seven to four, I'd, I'd probably say it's probably slightly overpriced. You know, they're going with the momentum. We've we've seen them in their recent series. Um, over in Australia last uh, last Christmas and the New Year, where they finished very strongly in that series. And it's got this very similar sort of ebbs and flows to this one, where they've come back in day five and they've backed against the wall sort of stuff. And you've seen Kohli and Rohit and Shastri just leading the troops together. And it's, I think Shane Warne touched on it yesterday on um, Sky Sports, just how strong they are at finishing test matches. Mm. And it wouldn't surprise me to... I think England will we'll touch on that later on. They've got quite a few injury scares going into the game. I think Jimmy Anderson is, looks knackered. <laughs> he looks like someone in his 50s at the moment. So um, I do feel that we're on the back foot. So I think I'd, I think India would probably be the value at that first initial look at the prices. Yeah, I would. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see um, that price come under pressure um, as it did. Um, India went off very short for Headingley. It feels like a lifetime ago now, but um, they went off something like I think it's six to five for that game. Yeah, um, based in, almost entirely on a great last day performance. So now I could see that coming in. Um, would you have any sort of inklings for you know in play embedding? Because I think it's very possible to see quite big um, market movements. Um, England touched fairly short prices and with good reason um, during the Oval Test. They also touched a very short price at Lords. Would you be looking um, to take a position or to change your position in the middle of the match? Yeah, I, I, person, I think England actually got quite a very good record at Old Trafford from memory. They beat Pakistan last year in the series and they beat West Indies um, in the series before that a few years ago. I, I always think England are a side that when they look strong in the batting department, like they did at Headingley, at the moment, you've got to just grab it with two hands because we, we bat like a packet of crisps at the moment, to be honest with you. So I do feel England in play is something to look out for. I think we sometimes can be over overpriced. I think yesterday when we were 141 for two, it's my famous last words. I made a tweet saying we're 11 to two. That's ridiculously overpriced. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously then what preceded that was not ideal um but we do i think people do underestimate us and we are underestimated, underestimated in the betting i'd say um and i do have a few players to look out for if they are selected that i feel may perform josh butler is someone i'm keeping quite a close eye on at the moment he obviously missed the last test for the birth of his his um his child second child um he's averaging 14.4 in this series from five innings, um, which even by his standards in test cricket is ridiculously light. Um, it's now his home ground, obviously, having moved up to Lancashire a few years ago. Um, I, if he is brought back in, um, which I feel he, he can do, I, I feel he could go well. Um, so I'd, I'd maybe look to back overs and runs on him. Um, I think in the last test that he played, 
the overs market was around about over 32.5 on him, which I thought was a bit light. Um, and that's and I'll just say that that's some one of the angles which I personally take on um, very well. I think I look at averages and stats. So Murray and Ali mm. scored 83 runs this series, an average of 16.6. It's not been a successful return to him. Um, you know, I think him being vice captain is all very well and good, but you know, um, I'm an off spinner myself, not necessarily a brilliant one, but you can't have someone like Murray needing our attack because with Bat Orbal, I don't think he's done enough to particularly cement the place in this side. And I think I'm going to maybe overly harsh here for people listening, but these particular players, Moeen and Joss Butler, I just feel, you know, you look at someone like Crawley and Sibley and the criticism they come under, nowhere near criticism comes under Moeen and Joss and you know, they're white ball players. They're some of the best white ball players in the world. But I do think we need to look where this test team's going. But that's, another, that's another matter completely. Oh, just, yeah, but it's a, it's a very valid point when it comes, um, especially this final test and looking ahead further. Um, just with regards to a spinner, um, would you bring back Matt Parkinson? Uh, uh, would you bring in Matt Parkinson, I should say? Um, there was a very good case for it made in Wisden. Um, Chris Silverwood has said on the record time and again, he doesn't want any Ashes debutants. Um, this is the last chance and he does, he does have impressive county championship form and um, yeah. he, he doesn't go too badly at Old Trafford either. Yeah, I, I think if there was a chance for him to play, this would be the best, best time to bring him in. Um, like you said, it's home ground. And I think Matt Parkinson, Parkey, is a confidence player. If you watch any of the 100, the way when he builds up his momentum, he's someone who bowls off off his confidence and his ego. And I think he's a very impressive bowler. I understand what Chris Silver was saying. That we, we've seen in the past players come into an Ashes series and they've just completely, you know, wilted under the pressure. I think um, not necessarily an Ashes series, but a big series. I think you might remember Simon Carrigan when he he's only ever played one test match um, against South Africa. And he, I think he got the yips basically and bowled 14 overs and went for 90 or something. And he never played a test match again. Um, and then Mason Crane, very talented bowler, came in and down under, he went on tour. Uh, I think he performed quite well when he played, but Matt Parkinson is someone I keep in mind. I am a Somerset fan. Um, so Jack Leach is someone I have a big place in my heart for. And I don't really see what he's done wrong, to be honest with you. I think there's a lot of people across social media questioning, you know, he played very well down in India on tour. I think uh, he ha- held his own. He, he had Pajara's number. Uh, and Rahani's number and I I think it's if you are going to take Jack Leach to the Ashes you can't just take him to carry water bottles he's got to play a part in the team yeah. so they need to look at that and it's a sad it's the sad reality of Test cricket now where a lot of teams are, are opting to not play a spinner just look at yeah. look at look at look at, look at Ashwin um, yeah. he's the second you know best Test bowler in the world He's even had a stint with Surrey in the county championship this year. And then he went, and of course, he only took six wickets at the, at the Oval and somehow didn't manage to get in. But alas, um, you know, Coley wasn't missing him too much, it seemed, on um, mm-hmm. on Monday. Um, just with regards to players he picked out, um, I'm in agreement on Butler. Um, I think I think we might have more success at Noel Trafford than he has... Um, so far, would there be any players you'd be up on um, in terms of their performance and anybody that you'd be looking to back? Anyone over the back is probably Rohit Sharma. He's the man at the moment at the moment for India. That 100 was, you know, fantastic. It was his first ton um, outside of India in Test cricket. Uh, and that itself is something which a lot of players, you know, in the modern era struggle to do. You know, people are so dominant at home. So for him to come over here and he's... He's made starts all, all series. Um, mm. I did see, I think, Richard Mann uh, did call that Rohit to be man of the match. And he, uh, Was he man of the match? I don't know. He was man of the match. Yeah. So that's, yeah. you know, and before the test, I'm sort of kicking myself because I he, he got in in every game um, and he's too good a player to go a whole series without making a massive impact on the game. So that to, to back him up, I'd, I'd go with him again, actually. I, I think he's in brilliant form. Um and obviously, he's got a massive role to play in the tactics of the side and helping uh, Cody with, with the on-field stuff. 
someone like Rohit. And then again, you look through that Indian batting lineup. I think I might have told you about this before the last time I was saying, you know, just look out for people like Pajara and Rahani and Pant, who've had very, very quiet series by their sort of worldwide reckoning. Um, and someone like Pajara and Rahani, who, you know, getting later on into their career, you know, they're playing for their place in the best test team in the world, obviously. So watch them for runs. I, I would... I would look to back Pajara again and so maybe in the in a 50 market, Pajara to hit a 50. I think he's you know two in a row now. And once again, you know, we talk about confidence in players. He he's yeah. someone he, he looks so much better than the, the first few tests you would say. Yeah, that, that's very true. Um crucial point though, would you be happier to back him in the second innings than the first? Pajara has had his first innings yeah. of tries. Yeah, I think like yeah, it's a very good point. Well, I think he averages about you know less than ten uh, single figures than in the first innings. Um, so yeah, that that is a line that you could look at. Um, but then if there's no Jimmy and Jimmy's someone who's causing all sorts of uh, problems this series, I do feel the likes of Overton, um, Wokes, R- Robinson. Um, you know, I, I could see Pedro being. All right. I think Jimmy's someone who's once again got him, got him in his phone book. So I, I would say Pedro and in the second innings, yeah, to 50 would be, would be something good. Around about, you could probably get, yeah, like, yeah, six to four, six to four, something like that. At the moment, I'd, I'd say it'd probably be a fair price for Pichard to 50. He, yeah, he's just hit back to back. Um, and he got out very cheaply in, in, in uh, at the Oval, so, yeah. Um, I would agree with that. I, I would agree with that, actually, um, that Pichard has looked um, much better in terms of getting that score. I mean, he yeah. looks a bit more yeah. like the player that we saw, um, I think, last in Australia, actually, because we talk about Coley and his prolonged period of, well, non-100 form. I think he's improved I think he's improved a bit um, over the last couple of tests. Mm. Um, it had been a long time um, since Pajara had gone some decent scores. Uh, just a couple of players, actually, I think I'll be keeping an eye on. Um, I'm very up and positive about David Milan. Um, he's in the same way that Chris Wokes has returned to the side and instantly looked very comfortable and instantly um, provided a crucial role. Um, Milan has looked very comfortable um, and was stupidly run out um, on one day, which um, <laughs> did not help. Did not help the cause. Um, no, not, not one bit. It was a uh, club, <laughs> club cricket sort of cool. Yeah, um, it, it was village. And to be fair. For all that there have been some poor shots, generally speaking, the standard's been incredibly high, especially when you consider that um, oh, yeah. both, both teams have had to fair a few injuries to deal with. Mm. I mean, he came in. Yeah. And um, well, well you've, you've got to remember as well, India, India have been over here for months. You know, mm. It's like, and I, I think that weirdly at the start of the series, I, you know, I was saying, I was saying to people, you know, England are going to be very slow out of the blocks. You know, we, yeah, it's we, a thing that's happened in, in a lot of series. Um, I'm wondering now when our last opening series win was. Can't yeah, we, don't, we don't start a series very well. <laughs> um, I can't remember us winning the opening test. Um, oh, yeah, we we we, um, we won the first game in India, didn't we? Ooh, was it the second test? Oh, we did, actually. We did, yeah, we won the first, which was, yeah, that was a brilliant result. And then, because I remember I got, I was w- waking up at, every morning at four o'clock, mm. turning it on getting very hopeful and then <laughs> it went downhill after that um, but no no you're right I, I, I think um, you, you've got to look at both sides um, in this series and you've got to look at where they're both at I think we've out bold India which I think some people may disagree with me but you've got Ollie Robinson who I know you're very keen on who's um, he's 20, 20, he's taken, he's taken 21 wickets. He's the team wicket taken. So. He, he, he's wonderful. And I think um, a crucial a crucial find um, in the sense that Anderson, for all, he's absolutely magic. Um, I don't think you can expect him and Broad to go on forever at the same work rate. Um, and I think it, it looks as if he's been feeling it. It looks as if Robinson's been feeling it too. Um, which makes the selections interesting, um, particularly if Wood is fit. Um, just going back um, to players that I'd actually be up on, um, I'd be interested in an English spinning option if one is picked in the second innings 
um, for wickets uh, or overall player performances during the match. Um, just generally speaking, because it is a nightmare when Ali hasn't found turn, the issue yeah. has been his economy. Um, you know, Jadeja was bowling at something like 1.63. Ali was going for something like four. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a big difference. If he's he, t- he was fantastic yesterday, Jadeja. He, oh. he was, he was, you know, arguably, I for someone, you know, um, I would say he was probably more important. I mean, Boomer's spell obviously turned the match on his head, but all morning, you know, Jadeja's going at less than two and over, and he, he I think he had Milan and not Hamid did never look comfortable against him. You know, I mean, he, he same, same, same thing as um, same thing as Headingley. He trapped him um, after mm-hmm. he got going, uh, which was. Very important. Um, although, and then we're going back and forth between these various players, but at least one positive might be that we have a top order that, in theory, should be able to establish itself and and get platforms. Which is why I'm keen on Milan because, generally speaking, and um, this is something that Richard Mann, who writes Sporting Life, um, does their cricket, also subscribes to the batting in theory is to get easier through the series, moving from Trent Bridge, Lords, Headingley especially, yeah. Um, yeah. to the Oval and Old Trafford. Um, in theory, they are pitches where all batsmen really should be a bit more comfortable. Um, Milan looked like a Rolls Royce um, in the only in, in Headingley. He looked, to me, fine. Um, in the first thing at the Oval, and then he didn't really get a chance to um, get in or, or, or see off Jadeja um, in the second innings yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I have the I have a feeling that he'll go to the Ashes. I think that's probably a wise um, move. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'd be keen on taking him on the runs line. I'd be keen on going over. Um, I think the quote was set at something like, 22.5 for the first thing to fall staggeringly low. Probably won't be that low again. I'd be willing to go to 28 or so. Um, yeah, I, yeah, and I, I'm completely agreement with you. I'd, I'd definitely go overs on him. He He's a player, you know, I'm quite a big fan of these mature test cricketers. You know, he's, mm. he's, he's you know, you've seen what he's done in the 2020 game and worldwide in the last few years. He was ranked for quite a long time as number one batsman in the world in 2020 cricket and he'll play a role in our in our World Cup campaign and I feel you know there are some times where I do agree with the England selectors it's very rare but someone like Milan is someone who I feel you know would slot into an Ashes squad pretty comfortably and, and do a job and like you said he looked I think that heading he was effortless really lucky, yeah. but never been away from the game um, was unlucky you know not to get more and then the run out situation is obviously not ideal. Um, yeah. And I always feel when a player's lying on the ground looking up to the heavens, you sort of know he's left a lot of runs out there. So, yeah, I, I feel I'm definitely in agreement with you with Milan. One of, another batsman I'd like to mention is Ollie Pope. Um, mm. And this is more in a, in a down, a downward negative view and someone I'd look to, I'd look to take on. Ollie Pope is brilliant, um, but he is very good at the oval. Um, I don't think we would have seen an innings like that anywhere else in the country. He's been in horrific form for Surrey all summer. Uh, he was released from the England side to go and play for Surrey in the Royal London Cup uh, quarter. Um, and he got bowled by Chris Rushworth, another just straight ball. The way he got out to Boomer, I thought it was, you know, it's, it's a crackerjack, but at the same time, you're playing test cricket. Maybe there's an argument to be made. He's, he's missed a straight one. Um, I, I just feel he's someone to take on, and I feel England will invest a lot of time in him. He will come good at some point. That, you know, that hundred down in South Africa a few years ago was you know phenomenal. Yeah, he hasn't really gone on. He hasn't been as consistent as I'd have liked him to be. And I just think he's a cheap wicket at times. So I would look to take take him on. And, you know, I'd I'd be backing against him in the run in the run lines. <laughs> Interesting thoughts there. Um, one player, actually, and this is probably my sort of nap in terms of opposition, is I'm really, really keen to take on the Jin uh, Just, just massive keen to take him on. Um, it is not that he is a bad bat, um, but it's, I think, a matter of him 
just struggling badly for runs in general. And I, I think just being better in general outside of England, um, everywhere else I think in the world suits him more than England. The one, the two places I've seen him really struggle off the top of my head are New Zealand, um, although to be fair, batting in New Zealand is very, very difficult now. Yeah, um, yeah. Without attack as well. You've yeah. Got, you've um, got someone like Carl Jameson, six yeah. foot ten or something coming in at you. So. Um, absolutely. Um, but though he looks general out of Nick, um, he's been targeted. England know where his vulnerabilities lie. Um, sometimes he'll get a bit more protection from the new ball if throw it and KL can make starts. Um, but I would still not be overly convinced about that. And, and his shot selection at times this series has been poor. It, it's actually been quite interesting. I haven't seen too many examples of really, really poor shot selection. The only two I can really remember in terms of giving wickets away were India at Headingley. Um, first, the first things after the Anderson spell. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then a couple from the lower order, or the middle to lower order um, for England. I'm thinking Ali in the first innings, I'm thinking possibly best, but the other, the others have been really good bowling. And Rahani's just struggled due to a lack of no Nick. Uh, yeah, he's massively out of Nick, like you're saying. Yeah. I, I'm surprised, really, because I think I'm someone who loves the county game, and he, he had a stint with Hampshire um, even last summer or the summer before, probably 2019. And it's quite interesting, I find, when players come over and play in the county, the county circuit for a bit, and it's normally, you know, to boost their, you know, know-how in a test test match situation. You know, you've seen players before, I think Hashi Mann was someone who loves the county championship and he reaped the rewards when, you know, that triple hundred at the overalls was, you know, fantastic. Um, mm. But that came off the back of seasons playing in the county championship. So Rahani's someone, I think it's, maybe he is someone who's been on the down downgrade for the last sort of six, six to 12 months. Um, and I, you know, this is this is what betting on cricket is. It's a lot of the time I find it's based on the, it's fueled by opinions, isn't it? You know, we've all everyone's got opinions, and that's why it's so interesting. Um, and that's why I find it nice to find people to talk about because yeah. not not everyone um, goes into much detail of why they would back a certain player or etc. So that's that's the beauty of betting on cricket, I suppose. Absolutely. Um, this has been a really interesting chat um, and I think we'll come to wrap it up there. But just quickly um, before we go, um, your best bets, um, the lines haven't come out yet for player runs and performance lines or whatever, but your best bets for Old Trafford uh, based on what you know now? As it's the first sort of one of these, I'm going to go quite bold and try and put my name into the headlines. I'm going to back... India to win the test, they're currently seven to four. And I'd look in play if they make a reasonable score. We're looking 275 to 300 in a first inning situation. I'd look to back them in play. Um, and that would probably you'd then be looking at early wickets. You're looking around about the evens mark, you know, five to four. Um, I, I even think there'd be value at um, eight to 11. Um, or if, if you're if you're into that sort of odds on shot and then as a sort of cheeky bet on the side I'm going to look at Joss Butler um, in the over markets and the run lines and I'd maybe have a look at him hitting a 50 as well if there's some nice odds on that and I think you probably get a good price on that because he's obviously been out of the last test and he hasn't had a great good series um, so there'd be my two big bets to look out for but just in general just look for people who you visually use your eyes and go with, go with what your stats and your eyes are saying. Um, great tips there, um, especially with the visual feel. Um, I think it's important to interrogate your visual opinions with data and to try and have a rounded approach. Um, you know, data can sometimes especially in the game with as many variables as cricket lie to you so it's important to be checking between both um i'm going to avoid the match market for now and wait for team news um i i think the i think the bet 
to be honest with you, might be just to back any of the three possibilities in play and wait for them to go shorter, um, mm-hmm. as they all pretty much have through the series. I, I think it's not an impossibility that England um, become shorter based on what they do first innings. They've had the first innings leads um, for the rest of the test, um, at which point, if you believe India and can do what they did at Lords and the Oval, um, they've already proven to, and you think the surf is good, you could back, you could back them at a the bigger price, or you could even do vice versa. Um, based on what's happening. So I'd be sharp for those um, markets. I'm going to go with um, Dan Balan, uh, first innings 50, and to score anything up to 28.5 runs or over, I think he's up to fantastic Nick. I think Old Trafford should be ideal for him. Um, he he plays all of the various styles of bowling very well um, and has seemed unbothered by the hostility of Bumrah and Siraj. Obviously, um, you know, their bowling's been fantastic, but he seemed less bothered by it than um, anybody bar Root. And I don't want to be opposing Root in the top run scorer markets. Um, you know, even in the second innings at uh, the Oval, he looked comfortably best until he dragged on. Um, yeah. So yeah. I think that's the way to go for it. And um, I'm going to go under whatever runs line is set for Ajinka Rahani. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in terms of the second innings, look out for the spin option in terms of price for amount of wickets taken. Um, if Parkinson was to get called up, I'd be keen to back him in that way. Um, yeah. Heck, even if Leach or, or Best was given a call up, I'd be keen to do mm. that. And last but never least, um, I think it's worth looking at Joe Root's runs line um, just to see if it isn't too close to 50. I'd mm. probably back him to be 30 or so in the first innings, especially as Hamid and Burns, generally speaking, have looked like a better opening partnership. That new ball is not doing as much. And um, Root's had pretty much every style of bowling worked out. Um, you yeah. know, the only two occasions when he's been you know, out have been drag-ons. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel he could adjust his game to deal with that. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with all of that, Will. I think, and the spin is going to be about the spinners for me looking in these teams this week. Ashwin, obviously we haven't, we've hardly spoken about him, but if he does come into this fifth test, I think he's got a lot to prove. I think he's going to be, you know, he's been cooped up all summer watching cricket with blankets over his legs. So I think Ashwin is definitely someone I could see making an impact on this game if he plays. And then yeah. likewise with the England spin option, you know, Leach, Parkinson, Bess, whoever it is, I think, you know, this is a massive moment for them looking forward to what we've got in the winter. So, And I think for all the players, people like Milan, like you said, you know, he hasn't, in my head, he's not got a lot to prove, but in the general England fan base and the cricket, the cricket lovers, I think oh, he's, sure. he, probably, he probably has got people knocking him every minute of every day. So I think, you know, they're, yeah, they're good picks. I'm, I'm, the Milan one's something I might have to get involved with. Yeah, I, I get the feeling like he is not far away from another first innings 50. Um, and it's I think it's a different job now. I mean, this new combination of his, Hamid and Burns is young. It's, it's very young. It's in its infancy. But what we do have, I think, are two players who have the ability um, to navigate the new ball a bit better. Mm. Um, and then once they're in, um, to occupy the time increase and just reduce the risk um, uh, to Root and to mm. Milan. So I can see him getting the best of that on a pitch, which I think will be easier for him then. Oh, yeah, and, and definitely. Uh, just, yeah, just sorry, last thing, because someone we haven't mentioned is um, Hamid, I think, Hasee. He, he yeah. is surprised. He surprises me every time. He doesn't ever look, you know, massively confident at the crease. Um, he's... I think his two fifties have been brilliant, but mm. it's going forward. Is you know, can you imagine him against Pat Cummins at the Gabba? I, I don't know if I can yet, but the, he shows a lot. He shows a lot, and I, I I do like the way he goes about his business at the moment. And it's a brilliant story, you know, coming back from playing as a teenager and then coming back into the Test side. And I think he may be undervalued actually in the, in the run lines. And I, I think he's someone to look out for in terms of 
people underestimating him, like myself. Like I've just done that. So um, he's someone I keep a close eye on to see how he develops. Definitely, absolutely. I mean, one last thing I should say is he's been excellent in the field. Oh, really? oh yeah, excellent in the field. The amount, the amounts of boundaries he saved. Um, yeah. I, I counted, I think it was possibly double figures in each innings, and that yeah. that has been very underrated. I know there's been a lot about our slip catching, which has got to improve. Um, you feel if we're to have any chance, but um, in terms of saving the amounts of runs, um, chasing everything, you know, yeah. he's nuts, he's some, saw him with the lid on as well, you know, at short leg, just he's very solid in there as well. And he's, you know, these, these players, when they come in for their debuts and they come back and new into the test side and they get chucked in, a lot of them, you know, often do quite well, which isn't, you don't want to be brilliant at short leg, but uh, <laughs> he is, he's very good. He's very good. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, thank you very much for uh, joining us and um, do enjoy the test and hopefully you enjoyed this preview too. Um, drop any thoughts in the comments and maybe we'll be doing this again sometime in the future. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks for having me, Will, and good luck for everyone having a, having a bat and enjoy the cricket. There's plenty more to come.